Hey guys and dolls, I'm Angie Jartaki for Simply Be, and today I'm going to be sharing some of my tips for applying red lipstick, like avoiding getting on your teeth. Ugh. Hey guys and dolls, so now we've come to the end of the road. Okay, I'm done. Hey guys and dolls, today I'm going to be sharing with you the final look in my anatomy of a pinup makeup tutorial mini series for Simply Be. That's a mouthful. I just have had such a blast creating this series for you guys. I just want to say a huge thank you to Simply Be for reaching out to me. This was such a blast to do. And I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this series as well. Please give my video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I want to remind you that at the end of the month there will be a lookbook showing you different outfits that go with the makeup. Outfits and makeup, look, look, at the end of the month. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and break down red lips. The first thing that you're going to need to apply red lipstick is, of course, a red lipstick. And selecting a shade can be a little bit tricky, but there is a little bit of rule of thumb that can be really helpful when selecting a color. So people who have a more warm skin tone, so people who have more of a golden or olive tone, you guys can get away with a warmer red lipstick than people who are cooler toned. However, almost everyone can wear a cool toned or true red lipstick. So something that is balanced and isn't too warm or isn't too cool or something that is more blue toned works on almost everyone. Occasionally those types of lipsticks can look a little bit pink on people with a more olive skin tone, but overall people can really pull them off. Occasionally they're a little too pink on someone with an olive or golden skin tone, and some of this is about preference. Some people who have a cooler skin tone prefer a warmer tone lipstick, and some people with a warmer skin tone prefer a cooler tone lipstick. It really doesn't matter. What matters is that you like the way that it looks and that you are going with your own personal preference. Another thing to keep in mind is that you can make a lipstick that's warmer work for you by using a cooler lip tone, vice versa, etc, etc. I will have a list in the description box down below of some of my favorite warm tone and cool tone lipsticks separated by the two different categories if that is helpful for you. Okay, so the first step for applying red lip is to hydrate your lips. Oh my god, I can't stress how important this is because there's nothing worse than dry, cracked, chapped red lips. Ugh, that looks nasty. So what I did is I applied a very generous amount of my lip balm, which is Dr. Kiss from Vanity Mark. I love this stuff. It's a very nice hydrating lip balm. I've had that on the entire time I've been applying my makeup, so now I'm going to remove it. Because while well, it's important to have your lips hydrated, it's not so good to have them all creasy greasy. The next step is to prime your lips, and one thing you can do if you don't have a lip primer is just to put a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of lip balm, or maybe leave some lip balm on your lips after blotting it off, and then just press some powder over your lips. It This isn't like the best, but it does work, and it actually can help you if you're going to be reshaping your lips. It can kind of conceal the natural lip line. I prefer to use lip primers, and here are two that I use. This one is from Too Faced, it's called Lip Insurance, and it's really great at locking color on, so if you have a problem with lip color bleeding, this would be a good one to look into. It does smooth out the texture of the lips, but it leaves them so dry. This is the most drying lip primer I've ever used, and I, I just, I can't. My lips are always so chapped that I really don't use that one often. My favorite lip primer is the MAC Prep and Prime Lip. And I like this because it does hydrate the lips a little bit, but it really does keep everything locked in as well. So it's sort of kind of like a lip balm and primer in one, and it doesn't leave my lips feeling super dry. I'm just gonna apply that and let it set. This primer does take a minute to sort of dry down, so you wanna check your lips. Once they have that little pop sound, they feel a little tacky, that's when it's nice and set and you're ready to apply your lip color. Now, I personally prefer to just go in with the lipstick and just go for it and put that on and then perfect with the lip liner later. Because I'm wearing the primer, I don't need the lip liner to lock on the lipstick. It's more about just cleaning up the edge. You really do what's right for you. In fact, today I think I'm just going to use the lipstick without the lip liner. So apply your lipstick today. I'm using Urban Decay's F Balm. Get on in there. So now that I have my lipstick smeared all over my lips, you can see it's kind of uneven around the edges. So I'm going to use a small little brush. This is a MAC 228. It's technically an eye brush, but I prefer it for the lips. And my lipstick, and I'm just going to clean up the edges. Go really slow. 
glide it along. And one really great tip, when you're applying lipstick and you feel like, oh, I really can't get this, take your finger and pop out your lip. And then the bottom edge, I normally just drag it in from the outer corner and towards the center. Now I already have my lips sold in, but let's say I made a mistake like that, okay? Let me show you how to fix it. I'm gonna go ahead and take a cotton bud, and I'm gonna wipe that from the outside in. Don't try to smear it this way, because you're just gonna make a bigger mess. Then pick up some remover. And continue on trying to wipe it in towards the center. And your skin might get a little red from being pushed on or pulled on. Don't worry about it, it's okay. Now in order to fix that line, I'm just gonna dot a tiny little bit of my concealer on. And then I'm gonna take a flat brush Okay, and there's a little bit of concealer still on the lip. And take a tissue and just, I'm gonna press and roll down to remove any excess of the concealer that's on my lip. And then I'm gonna apply my lipstick over it. All right, clean it up with the brush again. And then the way that I always finish off a bold lip is to take a little bit of my colorful face powder. I'm going to say paste powder. Paste powder. <laughs> take a little bit of your face powder and just run it along the outer edge. It's going to create a textural barrier that the lipstick won't want to cross. Especially over anywhere you fixed a boo boo. And then just take a fluffy brush and blend that all out. This lipstick is more of like a satin finish. It's not like super, super glossy, but it's not really matte either. So it can be a little bit high maintenance. If you want to turn it into a matte lipstick, it's actually pretty easy. I'm like, hey, okay. So all you need to do is really blot it. And a lot of women will take a tissue and they'll kind of clamp down on it like that. I have a different method, so I like to very carefully place the tissue over and then just pat it on. And then gently take it off. And the reason I like to do that is because mashing down on it can sometimes make you do weird things with your lips that smears the lipstick, whereas when you just gently pat, it all stays in place. Another thing you can do is you can blot the lipstick down, reapply, and then blot it one more time to turn any lipstick into a long wear lipstick. And then we can't forget the last and final step. Whenever you do a bold look, you gotta do the finger pop. It's gross, but it's a must. See all that that came off my finger? You don't want that on your teeth. And here we have the completed look. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this anatomy of a pinup look. I love this type of makeup. And the best part is everyone looks good in this type of makeup. So it's a universally flattering thing. You might need to tweak this or tweak that to make it work for you, but everyone can rock, you know, a winged liner, lashes and lips and look fantastic. I wanna give a special shout out to all of my new subscribers and I wanna thank Simply V for asking me to be a part of this series. And that is it. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. Remember to vintage your tacky. Simply be yourself. See you later.